Hey, Terry, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Not too bad. Just want to put out a reminder that we are recording the meeting, so nobody's surprised by that. Uh, you staying cool today, though? Yes, I am. Good. It's very hot. <laughs> and air conditioning. Yes, I'm trying to turn my speakers up. I sent the May meetings to Chad yesterday and I said, you know, can you review and we can discuss and we, we can approve the May meetings. Okay. Well, you know, we have to do it as a council. It can't be just you and me. Da, 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 so that's da. fine. And I also, um, it. well, Angela doesn't actually have to approve it. That can just be done by the council. But I did send that along um, both versions of the minutes. Well, that's what he said. So I, yeah. I did. So, Everyone should have it, um, but no, it, the meetings can be approved at the you know at the meeting. It's on the docket, so we can talk about that and approve them. Right. Okay. I said I opened my speakers. And shout out to Rosemary. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow you to talk, Rosemary, just because you're here and we want to acknowledge that. Hey, Rosemary girl, how are you? And we haven't officially started yet. Hey, Karen, how are you? She's Good, how are you? Not too bad. Going well. Uh, we had some crazy rain in South Deerfield. Oh. Um, yeah, it was like can't, like almost like hail, not quite, but like just sheets of rain. Um, yeah, totally but, missed us in Amherst. Well, at least where I am in Amherst, we had nothing. Oh, oh well, <laughs> maybe you're lucky. I don't know. The plants might say otherwise, but yeah. Yesterday we had um, we had live butterflies at the at the senior center, and oh, they had wow. brought yeah it was really cool they brought stick bugs and this huge Ooh. beetle, um, and one of the seniors brought their grandkids and oh. it was oh they were so precious to watch it was it was really nice I got some good pictures. Good. So. Was it from the Hitchcock Center or somewhere else? Do you know where they from? Magic Wings. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Hey, Norma. Christina. And just another reminder to everyone, it's five o'clock and we are recording the meeting. You're not muted. Your video's on. You're all set. Okay. I'll shut the music up. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. And so we're still missing Jacqueline, Dennis. I think that's it. Chad, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Nice to see you. In fact, I see we have a quorum. Uh, no, I don't think so. We only have 
Terry, Karen, Christina, and yourself. That makes four. That makes four out of Dennis. Well, if you want to call it to order, you're welcome to do so, or we can wait for the other two members that were missing. I just texted um, Jacqueline to okay. see if I can get a response. Okay. We're going to have a tornado. They said be on the lookout. Contradictory reports. Mm. Some say hail, rain. One said tornado. Yeah, Central Mass, I saw, got a tornado warning for sure. Hey, Dennis. Wow. Hello. So Ted, did you want to call the meeting to order as chair and do a roll call? Maybe give it two minutes till two five minutes. after. Okay. How does that sound? Sounds good. Two other folks. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> One more minute. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a question of whether we have quorum or not. I thought it was four. Um, I see five, so I'm totally uncertain. Yep, it, yep we have a majority. There's a, enough for a quorum now. Mm -hmm. You just need a majority of the members okay, to be present. Uh, let me get this screen out of the way. Um, call the... July meeting to order. Uh, see if I can get this um, governor's statement about um, legality of meetings in Zoom. Pursuant to the governor's March 12th um, order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting is being conducted via remote participation. It's going to be recorded. Is the recorded button pushed yet? I announced that at five. Uh, roll call to check to make sure everyone's here. All right, part of this roll call is to see if um, you can mute, I mean, unmute, and if you're on screen and that sort of thing. So um, I'm gonna go from uh, to my right, just as you are on the screen is Terry Carr here. Terry Carr, please unmute and let us know if you're present. Terry Carr, please unmute and let us know if you're present. I'm present, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Karen. 
Here. Um, Christina. Here. And Dennis. Right here. Okay, so we're all present and accounted for the, um, boy, this is complicated on Zoom. Um, the uh, first item on the agenda is um, public comment. Um, we have a period, uh, you know, uh, donated to our agenda that's um, uh, allotted for public comment. Uh, residents are welcome to express their views. They get up to three minutes apiece. Um, we're not allowed to engage with them. We just listen to what they have to say. Is there anybody present for that today? Does not sound like it. So I want to welcome uh, the members that are present and um, go ahead with, um, do folks have a um, agenda um, with them? Can they see the agenda? Yeah. Uh, otherwise I'll have Haley put it on the uh, share screen and we can follow it that way. Sounds like Dennis has his. Yeah, I printed it out. My printer is broken, so. Do the other members have? I have um, mine. You got yours, Terry, Karen, Christina. Um, how about you, Norma? I haven't heard from you yet. Do you have a? Yes, I do. Okay. Yep. So this Terry. Norma has one as well. All right. So the first item, as you will see, is um, four items from the director. I don't see any time allotted for this, so I'm not sure how long it will go. Can you give us a rough estimate, Haley? Um, I think it might take maybe 10, 15 minutes, you know, I'm not really sure, okay. but I'll, I'll try to keep it fairly concise. So um, there's actually quite a few things that I need to update the board about at the senior center. Um, the first thing I do wanna put um, an announcement out about, I got a call from a concerned senior um, about cooling centers. So the Bang Center is open between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. If people need to come in Monday through Friday to cool off, um, that's certainly an option. And you know, oftentimes we have programs going on so people are welcome to hang out and uh, attend one of those. Um, if you know of somebody who needs that, if maybe they're afraid to turn on their air conditioner because it's too expensive or they don't have one at home, you know, please send them to the bank center because um, we, we want to make sure that they can cool off in this heat. Um, so that's my first announcement. The second announcement is rather good news. Um, the health department has moved their vaccine clinics to their health offices. So they no longer need to use room 101, uh, which Ooh. means that we are free. Yep, that's an excellent sign, both because now we have that room available for programs, but also enough people are vaccinated that they don't have the demand. Um, you know, we may need to adjust in the fall. I'm sure there will be a booster clinic, but as of right now, we do have, um, you know, almost free reign over that space again. So that's excellent news. Um, yep, I'm very happy about that. Uh, number three, I do want to kind of talk about just the visits that we've had. You know, we've, we've seen definitely an uptick in people coming to the senior center, um, but that did go down a little bit in June. Uh, we averaged about a thousand visits, which is maybe like 49, 50 a day, um, which is about half of what we have been doing in May. And there are there are a couple of reasons for that. You know, we had one big event in May, which boosted our numbers, um, kind of skewed the average there. Um, and ten, people tend to go away July through August. So we don't have as many people uh, in town to use our services. Um, but one thing that I kind of want to highlight for the board, and I would like to take some time to talk about this is how do we promote our programs? Um, you know, how do we make sure that people are, that know about what we have going on and that can then come and attend? Um, so on my end, I've been working with Brianna to do more Facebook posts, put everything up on the town calendar when we have a special event, um, doing more press releases, trying to get, um, you know, making sure that we talk to Amherst Bulletin, um, The Reminder, um, places like that. But I don't know if anyone here had some thoughts on other avenues I might try. Uh, I have a kind of feeling that people just, maybe they get their newsletter, but they don't read it. And even if there was something that they might want to attend, if they're not reading it, they don't know about it. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that? Anything yeah. that maybe stands I, up to you? I, 
Mm -hmm. I suggest the interfaith council. Okay. Because most of them, um, you have the Muslim community, you have the, the um, Quakers, you have various religious organizations. On my part, I volunteer as a church clerk at Goodwin, mm -hmm. and I share anything right. related to senior um, center or mm -hmm. Department of Health, anything, I always share it with our members, but we're only a small section of the population of mm -hmm. seniors, and there could be a lot more people reached through the Interfaith Council uh, with all of these religious groups. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great idea. If I gave you some flyers, would you put them up? Because we even we're offering things like a blood pressure clinic for free walk in mm -hmm. um, Reiki sessions once a week, we do a foot clinic, we do a hand, uh, hand nail clinic, mm -hmm. all at the senior center for either free or for very low cost. And if people if cost was prohibitive, we do have our wellness grants. Um, so I'm going to get you some flyers if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Will you accept um suggestions on email sure okay so we can send if, if things come up in people's minds later mm -hmm. do, do folks have her email it's on today's announcement okay, okay. um just a, a a quick idea as as a photographer you know that um a man with a hammer to a man with a hammer everything looks like a nail <laughs> And, yes. and, and I was I was kind of thinking that if you've got these activities going that we could possibly put together, you and I could possibly put together mm -hmm. a photo story and uh, sell it to uh, the reminder publications. OK, they're probably oh. absorb some of their space. They they've uh, they've taken some of my photos from uh, Brianna Sunred mm -hmm. and used them on the front page. Ooh. And I don't know how much space they've really got available, but it it's it's it might be worth a shot okay. uh, i don't have any contact i don't know anybody there at, at reminder so maybe that's something that i could work on before we actually start shooting i've got uh dylan dylan Corey, i think is his last name um i've touched base with him now what is a photo story i've never heard of that oh it's basically like a, a block of oh i don't know i i would probably hand to them mm -hmm. let's say 15 or 20 different photos of different things that are going on at the senior center, like a RK class and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they could boil it down to like a package, a group of photographs on a single page mm -hmm. of let's say eight photos cool. and a little story under it. Oh, neat. Yeah, that and, sounds like a great idea. Yeah, and, and it would just be a nice package of exposure that they themselves would not have to generate. Their mm -hmm. biggest commitment would be to find the space and lay it out in a okay. relatively attractive manner. Layout is not a real big skill with those guys over there, but you know, mm -hmm. enough photos of local people mm -hmm. is always always a good thing. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we can definitely use some more photos. I meant to tell you the other day about some a couple programs I'd wanted you to take pictures at, but ah, ended see. up doing. I did them myself, but I'm not a professional, so you know. How dare you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm adding that skill to the resume, though. Um, <laughs> so we can talk about that. Yeah, that sounds really good because I I think really that that's the pro that's one of the key problems that we're having at the senior center with our low attendance you know it's really not enough to put something in our in-house newsletter even though we want them to read it i think a lot of times it ends up forgotten or maybe in the waste bin um yeah so we got to be a bit more engaged now, i don't know if karen if you have any ideas about umass things we could do yeah i'm not sure so i'm not sure umass but what occurred to me is is mm -hmm. it i don't know how many of the seniors use email is it worth putting together some kind of listserv that sends them weekly reminders of that week's mm. events that they could opt into? We we have one for the newsletter, but we might, maybe another one would be good, or at least trying to refresh people's mind on that. Broadcast is a great um, method. You make yeah. one message and hit the button and it goes out to multiples now. Right. Facebook is that way. They have to click on mm -hmm. Facebook to become a friend. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have uh, a Facebook page. We or... do. So mm -hmm. what you would do is you'd encourage people to hit the friend, uh, friend the senior center. And that way, anytime that you want to put something out, they receive it. That's a push. I think yeah. what we need is a pull as well. Yep. That's right. But yep. right now, I'm looking at the time and uh, part of my role is to move us along. So I don't know. Sure. Yeah. So I do, oh. speaking of polls, I do want to talk about some upcoming programs that I want people to be aware of. Some of those are senior center specific, but we have a couple of community events that are really, I'm really excited about. Um, so there's Mondays um, starting July 25th and July, uh, August 1st and August 8th. We have um, Dusty Dufresne. She's um, July 25th, she's going to be doing a little like folk uh, kind of music at two o'clock at the Bang Center. And then on Monday, August 1st, also at two o'clock, we have a 60s folk tribute. Um, Roger Ticknell does this really nice performance uh, to, to take you back in the day. So he'll be there at two o'clock. And then Monday, August 8th at two, we're doing music at two, if you if you catch the theme, um, is Steve and Tommy. And they do polka, they crack jokes, they, they, they do everything. Um, we'll do a meet and greet with Cress on Friday, August 12th at nine o'clock. Earl is gonna bring coffee and donuts. And then um, we have two ice cream socials coming up where we'll have sheriff's candidates. Um, Sheriff Patrick um, K. Helene will be at the Senior Center Friday, August 12th at one o'clock to meet with the seniors and talk about the sheriff's race. And then uh, Sheriff candidate Caitlin Sapita will be there the, on the following week, Friday, August 12th, 19th, also at one o'clock. Um, then we'll have a program on black holes Tuesday, August 23rd at 10.30. Uh, we've got a professor from Smith College, Gary Felder, will be here to talk about the magic and the mystery. Um, and then we're doing a hearing loss program with the Florence uh, Hearing Clinic on Wednesday, August 24th at one o'clock. Uh, the other community events that we have coming up, we're doing two poolside movies with Amherst Recreation. So next Friday, July 20th, July 29th um, at eight o'clock, we're showing Jaws at the Mill River Pool. You can sit on the lawn or you can swim in the pool while you're watching the movie. Um, and then the following Friday, August 5th, we're gonna show Cocoon. And I'm hoping to pack the pool with seniors. That would be very appropriate for that movie. Um, again, both of those are eight o'clock. And then we are also doing a community safety day with the police, fire and crest departments. Um, very excited about that. It's Saturday, August 13th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we'll be doing a touch a truck event. So there'll be a fire engine, cruisers, motorcycles. Um, we'll do fire safety demonstrations. There'll be a Jaws of Life presentation. Um, we'll have a canine. And then the district attorney's office will be present to talk about scams. Um, we'll be doing a car seat giveaway with AAA. Um, what else? Holyoke Hummus uh, Company will be our food truck. They'll be catering the event. And then we have performances by puppeteer Tom Knight. Again, Roger Ticknell doing like a 50s music presentation. And then Amy Salmon uh, will be doing Zumba. So we, we, I've gone all out for this event. It's just a way to showcase how we're working together to address public safety. I'm hoping to see some grandparents and grandchildren and people really just having a fun time at a free family event. Um, and that'll be at Mill River again on Saturday, August 13th from 10 to two. And if anyone is around and can definitely use a few hands um, if you have time that day. But anyway, I would love for, for people just to go and Dennis to take some photos would be amazing. <laughs> So, okay. and, uh, and then the other big news at the Senior Center on a, on a less positive note, so we are looking for a new admin assistant. Um, unfortunately, David Rodriguez is no longer working for the town. Um, so this has kind of put Helen, uh, Donna, Deborah, and myself really like full blast um, having to cover as much as we can while also facing volunteer shortages. Um, we are going to be interviewing some candidates for admin assistant next week. I've got six people lined up who, I, who I'm really thrilled um, about, but in the meantime, it, it's definitely been tough to keep up with everything that's going on with the phones and people walking in because now we're more busy that way. Um, so we shall see. Um, so wish me luck next Thursday that we can get, get a good first round um, with some folks. And... 
and that's about it. Yeah. I think you can move on now. That was all of my updates. I see three other three other items under your. Are you going to cover the other three um, items? I did talk about the programs. I did talk about special events and staffing. You're right. I did neglect the age and dementia friendly project. How could I? Um, so this coming Monday at 2.30, we have the talk on transportation, buildings, and outdoor spaces. And that'll be via Zoom. I sent out a link earlier today. If you didn't get it, I'll can send it again. Um, this will be the third listing session in the project. And then the, the ones to follow will be public safety and we'll have a special Spanish speakers session. Um, and those are actually gonna happen a month later than first anticipated. So those will happen in September and October. We'll take a break in, uh, in August. All right, thank you. Um, I don't see any specific individual listed beside number five, six or seven. Oh, yeah, so seven that... Is, um, well, if I could say a quick thing about five, so that was an item put forth by Greg Bascom, but I don't know if everyone on the council knows that Greg has given his resignation um, on the council. So we now have a seat vacated by Rosemary Koffler and Greg Bascom. So we'll be trying to recruit for two seats. Um, Greg had wanted to talk about open meeting law and email communication among board members, which is a really important topic. Um, you know, essentially, you just can't give your opinions to another board member. Everything's got to be discussed at a public meeting to, for full transparency. And I did find out that there is a open meeting law training webinar on Tuesday, August 9th from 9.30 to 11. Um, the state has a, an open meeting law website you can go to if that doesn't fit your schedule, they have other trainings. Um, but it's, it's definitely something that, you know, people on the board should know about. You, you know, you'll wanna, if you know it, refresh your memory. If it's new, definitely take the training. And has everyone done the training before on the council? No. When I worked for um, the senior center, um, they had me do a mini course um, and sign off on a pledge. And uh, there was a sort of like a little test. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, I, I don't know, that was in the past uh, before COVID. Mm -hmm. Might have been 2013. I'm not sure. I can't remember the past that well. I mean, dates and, and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, went through that. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is as long as you don't talk about policy, it's all right. It's uh, really giving opinions, you know, if it's something that you would deliberate on. Um, and certainly, you know, you wouldn't want to do that with you know, a fraction of the board. You, um, so I, I would definitely recommend the training and I have the link if people want, I can email that to you. Um, you know, where is the training? It's, it's online, it's a oh. webinar. Um, if you go to mass.gov slash open meeting law, they have a whole list. Um, the attorney general's office puts those out very regularly. All right, any questions, any comments? We have a question from Linda Terry. I don't see the hand, sorry. Oh, if you hit the, oh, I, well, I can, cause I'm the host. So um, maybe that's I, don't, I didn't ask, a, I didn't raise my oh, hand. Didn't? No. Oh, you didn't? Okay, there you go. Just listening, just listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Dialogue on future direction. That was one of mine. Um, what I wanted to say about that, and I, I'm not sure um, anyone else is of a common opinion, is that um, the organization has uh, like a 47 year history with one director. And we had a short time with a, um, another, uh, Mary Beth was here for a while. And now we have uh, Haley. Um, we also have a, quite a few new board members. Um, this is what is generally called reorganization in most, most uh, organizations. Um, and 
there is an ability to coalesce as a team, um, take some breathing room and look into the future and say, what do we want to do for the next three to five years? Better known as a strategic plan. Um, you know, we have been very lucky that we've gotten um, this AARP national survey has come to town uh, and we've just got some results from that. My thought again, this is, I'm all talking just about me. I don't know how other people feel. Uh, one of our members, uh, Mila, I knew her thoughts, um, was interested in using the strategic plan and saying, how do we go forward with the data that we've received from this? Um, typically, uh, people are polled for their interest on the items that are on the top of the list from a, from a um, survey. And, uh, you know, self-motivation is a great um, energy to, to go forward. I don't know if anybody's seen the results, but they're what folks would typically think on the surface, um, transportation and housing are, are big. But we could do cross tabulation. I don't know how many of you are familiar with cross tabs, where um, you know answers are statistically um, compared with other answers and coalesced together to make answers to questions that weren't asked on the survey. To me, that's where the real dynamism of a of a of a survey like this can come from. But at any rate, um, my thought is that we move move forward with that, that we make our own agenda, um, that we own our minutes, uh, that possibly we have a, a retreat in, in the fall where we can do some personal kinds of things uh, so that we can move on more towards business types of things. Um, we don't really know each other here. We see each other on a screen. Soon we'll, we might see each other for an hour and a half once a month. Um, to go forward in a dynamic way, I think we need to develop trust in each other. We need to know each other, know what, their, what others' interests are so that we can lean on one another and together move forward and really make some impact for the, for the elders of Amherst. So that's my little, little spiel on future direction. Don't know anybody's feelings on that. Um, since there's no times on this agenda, I'm not sure how long we should spend. Maybe I'll just limit it by saying, does that sound like what other people in the room, so to speak, in the room, um, see as important? How about, again, first to my right, Karen. I think is I, I like the idea of getting to know people better and I'm looking forward to meeting people face to face. It's I think this is a very difficult way to get to know people. Um, yes. I think for a retreat, as long as there is an agenda for the retreat, I think that I would be on board, you know, as long as I could. I'm someone who works a more than full time job, so it would have to be I wouldn't want to hold other people up. But um, if I'm going to attend, it would have to I'd have to work around my work schedule. But I think it's a. I do think as long as there's an agenda and there's a reason for holding a retreat, uh, it's a good idea. It certainly gets, well, it, it's an opportunity to have a, a longer period of time together to do things that are very difficult to do in an hour and a half, once a month. So if you'll allow me to press you a little bit, mm -hmm. I'll do that after we go around again and give you a chance to think about what would be on that agenda. Mm -hmm. How about uh, Christina? Mm -hmm. Well, similarly to Karen, I work two part-time jobs and therefore I'm limited to, um, you know, I can come to a meeting after five, but in terms of the middle of the week, I only have one day off that I could attend a, um, because my work, between the two of them add up to an enormous amount of hours. And so 
I would have to, there's only one day of the week that I could meet for a retreat during the mornings. Um, so I, I don't mind going to um, a, uh, a retreat, but I'm also, I hate to say this in public, but I'm immunocompromised and um, on immunocompromised therapy. So I really do not feel comfortable being in, I haven't even gone back to my church in person. Wow. So Thank you for sharing that, Christina. That is, it's a hard way to live. Mm -hmm. Prior to the pandemic, I would jump up and say, yeah, let's go. And Chad knows me well. I remember, I was, that's true. I was on yeah. a choir. Yep. I was in a choir with him. We traveled everywhere. We went to every town we could to sing. And it was not a big deal. But my life has changed drastically because of this pandemic. And I'm limited. So I really don't want to be around any. My sister came to my door earlier and I had to wear a mask, mm -hmm. you know. That's too bad. Yes, it is. So I'm limited to being able to be face to face. And I like the idea of meeting outdoors now that the weather is going to be still good for that hour and a half. I'd be happy to do that with my mask. But for the retreat, we would have to be indoors. And I don't know if I can do that. Well, actually, nothing has been decided yet. That's one thing that I'd like to see the board be able to do is decide things together. At any rate, thank you for that, Christina. How about Terry? Are you still here, Terry? Yep, I unmuted. Well, I'm um, also unmuted. Yep. I'm all ears. Okay, I'm also immune compromised. So I don't feel comfortable face to face without a mask. And, you know, it depends on the time, the place, and how long it's going to be, because I'm busy too. And what's the can agenda? You, can you picture what it would be about? No, not yet. Okay, or the day of the week, or the length of time? Uh, an hour? We don't want to spend three hours on it, you know? I would say an hour and a half tops. Let's see, I guess Dick is last, uh, Dennis is last. Okay. Am I frozen? Oh, okay. Uh, someone else? No. Well, Christina has her hand up. We'll go back. We'll get to you, Christina. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Um, I'm pretty much in, in favor of it as well, but also have to be careful about my involvement very much the same. I mean, I'm, I don't have immune compromised issues, but I do have limited time available. Uh, and, and, um, I think probably the most important thing we probably could do would be to get together for, uh, it's an old idea that I came up with, which would basically be to, let's say, meet for possibly an hour or an hour and a half or something like that outside and not discuss actual issues, but just get to know each other a little bit. Uh, that is, in my opinion, is the greatest drawback to uh, always being on Zoom meetings that we don't get to see anybody in, in person. And it's, that's just sort of disappointing. And the town does have uh, uh, some, some good parks where we could grab a cup of coffee and just sit on a park bench and smile and get to know each other a little bit better. And that's really it, just really keep it simple. It would uh, not violate state, uh, state law, uh, open meeting laws, but it would just, uh, it would just we could just talk possibly just very generally about, uh, uh, about uh, what we would hope in very broad strokes 
to, uh, to accomplish uh, in uh, the next few years. That's it. Yes, there would no, be no violation of any open meeting laws. Yeah, I promised we can't do Karen that. I would get back to her, but um, Christina has her hand up. Go ahead. Go ahead, Christina. Christina. We, we see your, your hand is up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I just wanted to, I was just going to suggest that, that when we do have a meeting, we could we could come ahead of that meeting to socialize. Um, some of us socialized. <clears throat> some of us saw each other at the open house and it wasn't about business as usual. It was, hi, how are you? Seeing each other in a different light. Yep. And so I definitely, um, Dennis, you said it before I did, but it was on my mind that if we come, but I'm validating you. If we come, thank you. Even if it's a half an hour before a meeting, there's benches right outside of the Banks Community Center. There's plenty okay. of places to sit and congregate outdoors yep. um, safely and get to know each other. Hi, how are you? Check in with each other before mm. we then go into a meeting or- I validate you too. Yep, there you go. Whatever you decide works in terms of a schedule for everyone. We'll just mm -hmm. have to poll the group and ask them what would work for them in terms of meeting for a half an hour to enjoy ourselves before a meeting. Um, that's basically, those are my basically my two cents. And even if we do talk about um, what we would like to see happen in a few years in a broad sense, we can say, oh, that's great. Let's put that on the agenda. We're not breaking any laws because then yeah. we, you know, as part of our conversation, it happened informally, and then we're gonna put it on the agenda so we can discuss it more formally. Does that sound uh, okay to you, uh, Haley? I think, I mean, I'm, I'm in definitely in favor of getting to know each other more. I would want to check that, you know, by doing that, we're not inadvertently um, you know, breaking any rules. But, you know, I'm kind of wondering, Chad, you know, how, how does the director fit into that? Because I hear you talking about like we, and I'm not sure if we is the board or if that's the board and the director. And I, I need some clarification on that. Well, retreats are usually without staff, but we could talk about that. Let's hear well, if Karen has something to say about that. Well, I that. would like to still add, though, that the director is an, a really integral part of the Council on Aging. You know, the, the council is there to support and guide the director in the operations of the senior center. So I think if, you know, if, if you're going to be meeting without me, you know, that kind of feels like a, a, a big piece would be missing of that because, you know, I, I'm the relay for what's going on at the senior center. You know, you're, you're helping me with that vision, but my vision for the senior center is also very important and should be represented um, at the council meetings. Yes, indeed. I agree. And as I agree. we advise you, here, oh, excuse me, go, go ahead. One or the other. No. Christine, Christina <laughs> We're just chiming there. in, that's all. Yeah, me too. Go ahead, Christina. I agree that nobody who's involved in serving the seniors should be excluded from the meeting. Oh, so part of your suggestion is that we have the other staff members from the center at that. Oh, I don't even know who the staff members were. There was only one administrative assistant. I do not know who anyone else is. Well, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't need to be, you know, again, a council on aging works with the senior center director. That is yeah. guidance from the Massachusetts council on aging, which is the, the regulatory authority for councils on aging. Um, so it wouldn't have to be the entire staff. It would just be the director. Well, then I will change that word to the director. I think maybe we should have a motion, you know? Well, My let, question. Let me, let, let me hear from, uh, well, we can't actually hear from Jackie, but maybe we can hear from Karen. And We can. Jacqueline is here. She's at the she meeting. Hear, hear the, the discussion to this point. Oh, do you have any questions so far, Jacqueline? Could we can fill well, you in? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not. Um, I I will need to review the um, 
the guidelines for the organization. Um, I think the policies uh, for, from the town sound like they're very clear and the suggestion would be, would be following that. And I think looking at um, the mission and uh, the bylaws of, of the um, council would be important. Um, on the one, on the one hand, I I feel that it's just common sense that uh, the director would be involved and be a part. But I also feel that we should make sure that we are on uh, steady and sturdy ground by referring back to the bylaws. Mm -hmm. Sure. Not but, but and. And I apologize, I had some technical difficulties, um, but I'm here now. <laughs> I, I get this idea from other boards and committees and commissions and so on that do this within the town. What would you see, Karen, on as um, some of the agenda for a meeting such as this? I think we're it seems like we're talking about two different things. So there's the issue of just getting together and getting to know each other. But then to me, that's different from retreat, you know, and it's different from strategic planning. I'm kind of mired in strategic planning in my job. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, you know, and I don't, I don't know if, if we have the appetite for really doing structured strategic planning where we're doing a SWOT analysis and then developing a, goals, long-term goals. I do think it's worth developing goals. I just don't know whether it sounds like people are very busy and this can be very time consuming. So I'm not sure whether a true strategic planning process is something that's feasible, but certainly thinking about our goals. And for me, you know, thinking about what is offered in Northampton, you know, I'm, I'm Facebook friends with the Northampton Senior Center, even though I've never been there, just because I was curious about mm -hmm. what they have to offer. And it's impressive what they have to offer. And whenever, whenever I see something there, I think, why can't we do that? Um, mm. So I think doing some visioning and some goal planning would be something that would be an interesting thing. But I'm not sure if a true strategic planning process is something that um, many of us have the time to engage in. I'd love to know what those programs are sometime. But I also do want to point out that Terry has her hand up. Ready for me? I think we should update the member notebook before we start any strategic planning or agenda, et cetera. So we know what our roles are and what we're responsible for, et cetera, et cetera. Before we go into this agenda retreat, that's just my thoughts. And I don't know when that's gonna happen in September, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't talked about that yet. Um, you know, I don't know. The member oh, notebook okay. is fairly up to date. And as far as I know, you know, before I got here, you all had talked about your bylaws um, and and redone them. So I don't know if you if you want to so quickly go back and do them again. And uh, you certainly would be welcome to do so. Yeah. Uh, so we. Well, so I if, thought that Chad, Christina, and you were going to do it by September. That's what I remember in one of the uh, meetings. I think September was like a CDBG grant kind of a thing, because that was something that Christina and oh, Chad and okay. I had met. Right. Um, and again, that I still don't have an update on. I think the, the state had a delay. So now the local level has a delay. So you know, I think things are, everything's just delayed right now. Um, and then Christina also has her hand up. OK. Um. Not that I am opposed to a strategic planning, but I don't believe that we have the expertise to run a strategic plan in the way that it should run. Is most organizations, and I have worked at UMass, and I have worked with professors that have gotten grant money and everything, and I, they hire people with the expertise to come in and talk to them about strategic planning and then get everyone together, give everyone nice meals, 
and they worked on this stuff together. This is not something that I believe a small, a small group of volunteers to this council can pull off. And I am definitely in agreement with Karen on looking at, I have spoken with my friends and I have spoken to Rosemary and Jacqueline Smith when they interviewed me to be on this council and showed them some of the things that I saw on the Northampton um, programs and looking at how others who are similar to us in size and scope can do and implement them for our seniors so that we, if we focus on who we are serving rather than planning, a lot of planning, because I am pragmatic and I just want things to see things happen rather than all this planning. Because one thing about organizations, and I've studied in my management courses, is that the moment you finish a plan, another dynamic, another paradigm occurs, and then that plan gets squashed. Mm -hmm. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Or the leaders leave and the new leaders come with something else. So I'm not into a whole lot of planning, long-term planning. I would like short-term planning and action mm. uh, that is that has outcomes mm. that people can benefit from. Mm. I think that's great. And you yeah. know, I think some of that could be accomplished could in I the short term. A little bit here and well, can I talk really quick about, I think I have a really pragmatic example. And, you know, I've been, one of the things that we do need to do as a senior center is recruit seniors who are in their early 60s and even in their 50s, 55 plus. Um, I, had a, I had a senior give me this really wonderful idea. I can bounce it off of the council. This is, you know, again, something we could implement in the very near future and hopefully get engaged with our community is a, a grandparent lending library. Um, you know, currently we distribute walkers and wheelchairs. We could very easily have pack and plays. We could easily have high chairs, booster seats. So if I'm a grandparent whose children live out of town and they're bringing their grandkids, my great grandkids in, I can go to the senior center and get those things. I don't have to pay for it myself. I can just borrow it and return it when I'm done. You know, and that would be a way for us to reach new people, get the word out. Um, it would be a really unique service that you're not going to see at a lot of other senior centers. Um, those are the type of things that I think we we don't need a retreat to start doing. We can talk about those things now. We can start making right. plans to reach new people, new audiences now. Um, you know, we, we had the framework in place. Part of the issue was you, you had a long period of time where you, you didn't have a director or you had one and then that person left and you had an interim and there wasn't a lot of stability. But I've been here seven months now, going into my eighth month. There's a lot more stability now than there was in January. And part of what I'm hearing from you, that frustration is just not having that person to say, this is the direction we should go in because I've heard from people that this is what they want. We can give it to them. Um, you know, I think that we already possess a lot of the things that we are talking about doing. We just have to, like Christina said, sit down and do them, put them in the newsletter, put them in the newspaper, get people talking about us, get them excited to come to the senior center. And we can do that now. We are starting to slowly do that already. Jacqueline. Uh, I also think that um, engaging in the, it's good to have a strategic plan, but sometimes we get locked into developing strategies. And like you said, uh, how about our doing the do, just doing, and then we have a real strong basis for pulling together. Um, categorizing some of the things we're doing, because some of the things, as uh, we had discussed several months ago, I, there are seniors at various stages of uh, senior growth and development, may, maybe we should say, and there are also organizational needs of um, the senior, the senior center, and and one of them is, and 
advocacy component. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have education, advocacy, um, and that can, there are so many things that fit under each other. If we're going to plan maybe something short and sweet, like deciding what are the component parts? And at some later point, uh, really polish those things to uh, a T. But we can start testing some of them out, some of the ideas. Like transportation popped up uh, somewhere and it, it doesn't fit in quote a category, but it is something that we're doing. So we're just doing it. And, and like I was, I have mentioned to uh, Haley, you know, and it became very, very clear when there were forecasts of, of uh, three-digit temperatures. Mm -hmm. And it, I was reminded because of some of the, the uh, happenings during the winter, uh, safe places. So uh, we decide on maybe three components in this type uh, of meeting and delay that intensive strategic planning uh, even for a future date while we do some of the things that need to be done. Sure. On behalf of the seniors, with the seniors, um, and by the seniors. Thank you, Jackie. I agree. Jacqueline, please. Jacqueline, Thank I see uh, Terry's hand up again. I'm sorry. That I agree with Haley, what she said. Okay, is it my turn? I agree with Haley, what she said, and I think she's doing a heck of a job. Yes. And I commend her for that. Yeah. And we are here for the seniors in the senior center. We're not just here for ourselves. We're here to work together to get the agenda, to get the help to the people yes. who need it. Yes, yes. Absolutely agree. Right. And we do that. We do that a lot. You know, this board has definitely helped inform things that I have done, you know, looking at that CDBG grant opportunity. You know, again, it just takes a little bit of time for any new director to come in and say, you know, this, this is the way I think things should go. And the things that I think we should be doing are not just based on, you know, something I've pulled out of thin air. People have talked to me and said, I'm caring for my adult father and he doesn't know who I am. And how do, what do I do? Where do I go where we can just relax and don't have to feel like we're on display because yeah. my father has dementia, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I can't get to my med rides because I'm in a wheelchair and there are services that cannot take me. Those are things people have communicated yeah. to me. Those are clear yeah. needs that we can address. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we're starting to, we're gonna amp that up. Um, you know, there's a little bit of inertia, I think with people again, you know, yeah. I'm staying at home. So, uh, you know, why do I wanna go out when I can just, you know, I've been kind of doing this and I'm used to it. That takes time to overcome, and it certainly takes time with our older adults. You know, change can be hard for anyone. It's especially hard for somebody in their their 80s, their 90s, or 100 years old, and even younger. And even yeah, and even younger. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, I see time marching on. Um, one last comment: um, this idea was not um, a complicated UMass level um, idea. I've done this with very small organizations like our own. Um, I think it, it sort of um, points a direction that we turn our efforts. Our main job is to advise uh, the director uh, and it could focus that. Did you have a comment, uh, Linda? Um, I'd love to, if it's, a, if it's appropriate. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, you know, both cheer you on and also say I really, I think the, the thoughtful comments you made are, are on point in, um, in, you know, in generally, and I, you know, both the pros and the cons of the whole strategic planning, it's, it's complicated. But I, it, two, two concrete thoughts. Uh, one is, I, yeah, you know, I really thought that the idea of some kind of just, a single a meeting, I call it team building, you know, or the getting to know you meeting, that it's a combination of informal 
socializing, and but you can also create some. I don't want to sound that if I say use the word structure, it sounds a little colder, but it, but you know a structured program where you get to know each other in particular ways that are both useful for the relationships as well as useful for the organization. So um, I you know I thought it's a great idea and. You know, you can do those in small chunk, do that in a small chunk. And certainly, hopefully you could do it outside so you could have some fun and food and all that kind of stuff. So that, I just wanted to sort of frame that and suggest, you know, if team building as a word to bring that together was helpful that it offered it. The second is bigger and, I, and you know, I confess, I, I don't know all the history of Senior Center and all, but based on, you know, my last, in my recent involvement, it seems to me if there is a strategic goal call it, that is hanging over your, everybody's head, is it how do you get the resources to do what you're doing? Mm. I mean, the Haley's a dynamo, you know, and I don't want to lose her, you know. <laughs> Thank um, you. But, uh, but if there's something that, in a sense, guides the considerations of the future. It's really about how do we, you know, establish that connection, that visibility, that, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, that importance that we can start to get some resources from the town here. And that you're not, you know, I mean, you're always gonna burn yourself out on grants, but, you know, but you can't operate a, an organization mm -hmm. solely on grant funding. So, um, you know, I just wanted to raise that as if that helps to kind of consolidate things is how does that do the guiding question for whatever is, what is it that we need to demonstrate that says we are an incredibly vital part of this community and we deserve to be treated like the library and the, you know, education and DPW and everybody else who's getting some money. Um, so, and, 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 you know, and then third, it's just, you know, I'm from Amherst Neighbors. I am so admiring of what you're all doing. And I just really, I'm not sure I have a definition of what partnership and collaboration with, should look like among us. I just know I want us to support each other and work, work together and whatever that we can do to enhance. And we're also very thin on resources, human resources and money. So it's not like we, you know, we're flush, <laughs> but, um, but whatever we can do to help each other and work together on these things, I just want that to be on the, you know, present too. Yeah. Yes, and it is. I, I'm always referring people to Amherst Neighbors. I say, you know, please give them a call. You know, if we don't offer something, they do, um, you know, and again, I think there is a certain, there is a certain section of seniors who would prefer to engage with an organization like yours until they need an organization like us. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. really important that they know that both are an option. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Linda. And uh, and I can't wait to do the picnic. I'm yeah. really looking Great. forward to that. Oh, we just, it's, it, oh, off, off topic. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, if I can before the end, just announce. Yes, yep. you're, on the, you're on the agenda. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to Norma's uh, report. Oh, you're muted, Norma. Hello, I'm Norma Halleck, and I'm, um, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you're doing great. Okay. Um, this is a summary of the May 11th and the June 1st meeting of the Nutrition Council, uh, which is part of Highland Valley Elder Services. I've been teaching. Um, for them for, for about five years now, uh, different classes for seniors. And if you're on the board, you must be on some committees. So I'm on, on the Nutrition Council and um, their fundraising one as well. Um, and so first of all, they, the seniors that go for the, me, the meals um, get questionnaires to answer each month and sometimes they're filled out and sometimes people don't, you know, bother with it. But I'm just going to do a summary of the reports that are given um, by different people. Um, and one is requests, what would people like to see done more? And remember, this is from May and June, and we won't have another meeting 
till September, but they want more salads for summer. And, and that, you know, is, is a good comment, uh, but they do try to do that and they do get local produce as much as they can. can. Um, some wanted more portions, larger portions, and others wanted more soup, but you know, that can vary. And then Riley is the head chef and the meals on wheels are done at the Walter Salvo house in Northampton, but they do hundreds of meals a day and all work really well together. And Riley is right there with them. But then they asked for comments on the food and someone uh, said, well, we got French toast, but no syrup. And Riley, Riley said, well, I wasn't there that day, but um, there was a coating on the French toast that was like <laughs> cinnamon and brown sugar and, you know, similar to what syrup would be. Um, but he always tries to check on, on these things and, and see what he can do better. So he said he was not working that day. And so I guess this slipped by. Um, and then there was a, they got a new van, but they try to put a hot foods in one section and cold in another, but for some reason they got in together. And so the hot was cold and the cold was hot. And, uh, uh, but anyway, they're, they're working on that. And this was comments from Chesterfield. Um, the Walter Selvo meals are at 11 a.m. in the morning. And um, someone complained that the food didn't arrive hot. And it, it just comes across the room. So, you know, you can't please everybody. And, and they had to look at that and why that happened. And um, Hatfield requested lemonade on a hot day. And that makes sense. But many times the patrons don't realize that um, they, the uh, nutrition people have to go by what, what is healthy. And, you know, a big glass of lemonade is not as healthy as say a glass of 1% milk or whatever they give. They do have to give milk every day. And um, so they said they would try to work, work on that. They thought the salmon with dill sauce was delicious as well as the roasted pork. Now, these are items from, um, that was Riley's report, but then there was, um, items from the chef that they, they talk about usually monthly. And they've started this, these global meals and that's really doing well. And what that means is a certain center that has congregate meals um, will ask and they will try to do an ethnic meal, whether it's something from the Ukraine or if Poland, there's, there's a large, um, Ukrainian and Russian population in Westfield. And I think that's where it got started a few months ago. Um, and the com, uh, comedy, no, I can't think. <laughs> well, it's what the, in, the ups, um, it's, it's not comedies. What am I trying to say? C-O-M-M-O-D-I-T-I-E-S. Commodities. Uh, commodities, that's right. Thank you. Ellen. On the tip of your tongue. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm older, so, <laughs> so just look at it that way. Um, we'll increase the amount of chicken, and they're very pleased about that because they usually serve chicken once a week, but they're going to get an extra supply. Um, for as long as it lasts. And, and they're also getting extra eggs. And that is a big thing now. I mean, in the last couple of months, eggs have more than doubled in price for a dozen eggs. And so he said, well, there'll be more quiche, which people like something. <laughs> and Kelly is a relatively new nutritionist. The other one had been there over 30 years, but Kelly and and um, Riley are working together to plan the meals. And, um, and they will get fresh fruit um, now as the season progresses. And I've got down here strawberry season. Well, we know that's over and uh, watermelon 
um, will be coming um, through more. So, and the as more dining places are opening, Kelly will be doing some healthy nutrition um, promotion when she can um, at the site. And presently, there are comments on the back of their monthly calendar, but she's not sure everybody read, turns it over and reads it. So they're working on, um, you know, the nutritionist coming and talking to them directly. And they try to do that anyway. Um, and Southwick and Westfield are going back to house, um, in-house dining. And Westfield will start on Tuesdays and Thursdays and, and just started up again and used to have about 70 participants. But this last time when the report was written was only 30, but that will change as probably the fall comes on. But people are, are very happy with the grab and go meals and they would like those to continue. Um, and this was a new note that I had hoped to say last time, but for cardiac um, issues, a note from their doctor, um, they will give them a low soap salt frozen meals um, that are not made by Highland Valley, but I don't know where they get them from, uh, but they're made elsewhere and warmed up and served to um, the delivered meals. And, and that's really good because, you know, some people are diabetic, some are low sodium, some are gluten-free. So um, they're getting more into specialty meals and they're trying to do choice meals for the, um, home delivered ones and so that all the drivers now have gotten new iPad or gotten iPads and we'll be able to keep track of how things um, are going. Any questions? Yes, Jacqueline. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you for the work that you're, you're doing and I know that it can be quite challenging. Um, but for what kind of meals are available for vegetarians. I know that oh, as a vegetarian, not that I'm subscribing right now to yeah. the, um, Meals on Wheels, but I would visit friends and family and they have what I call the head of lettuce routine. Um, <laughs> if you're vegetarian, <laughs> surely every meal you want a head of lettuce. Uh, <laughs> but uh, great. <laughs> creative approaches and and nutritionally balanced as well yeah no that's very important i and i think people just select what they can i and but they will i think eventually be able to um you know to do more but with over serving over 800 meals a day and the holidays are even more i mean it's just you know overwhelming and so they tend to have meat, you know, we have turkey around Thanksgiving or ham for Christmas or whatever. Uh, and they have roast beef and a lot of fish, which not everybody likes. But, well, uh, uh, but I will, yeah. you know, that's been brought up. I appreciate it. Because yeah. Uh, um, one of the choices being uh, a vegetarian uh, mm -hmm. uh, a choice and the others. Yeah. I, and I'm sure that I don't know uh, what uh, about religious preferences, yeah. uh, but some people also, yeah. And and I know you can't go down the aisle and and take the order for everyone, but at least have some choices there. Yeah, that. Thank you, and I'll bring that up again at our next meeting. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? All right. Thank okay. you, Norma. <laughs> Do people know why Norma gives a report? Um, I've gotten some pretty crazy questions as a new um, director or co-director or whatever my job is called. It's the uh, chair. One chair. person. Chair. What is it? Oh, co-chair. Okay. One person asked, "How do how are decisions made at um, the COA?" Um, another person said, "Oh, there's more staff members than Ailey." Um, Norma gives a report because the uh, American, the Elder Americans Act of 1964 that formed the Council on Aging, that formed the Senior Center, also formed the Area Agency on Aging. So she's our liaison to that 
uh, local, which is called Highland Valley. Um, at any rate, let me take a look and see what's next. I think it's minutes. Yes. Now that may be a misprint. Um, if we had somebody who could look at the um, uh, minutes uh, and see that um, the only minute that wasn't passed was probably June. That's not true. May? No, at, May. at May, we it pushed it May. back. May mm -hmm. instead so we... of April. So um, you, you, actually... had, you had a question on the May minutes. You didn't, you had a question on the May minutes. You didn't like how I worded something. So no, we it wasn't a like up tonight. or a dislike. Um, a piece that was left out of, of that, um, I don't have it in front of me, though. I emailed uh, it mentioned to you that, yesterday. Excuse me? I mean, yeah, I it, emailed it to you yesterday. It was emailed, and then in the, in the agenda that I sent to all the council members, I did send a copy of the May and June minutes mm -hmm. with a note that we had to approve both. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I'm speaking about. Mm -hmm. um, there was a section in there that... Uh, mentioned um, that I um, wanted um, um, to do a, a specific item. What I wanted to do was just add to that minute what it was that I said, that I thought it might be a good idea to have overlapping um, terms, uh, selectmen uh, before the, car mm -hmm. the charter change, uh, mm -hmm. and possibly town council now, Many organizations have overlapping terms where instead of reelecting a new, um, uh, you know, five member positions, um, they have um, two that mm -hmm. are elected in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in, a, in a schedule so that not everyone like our own organization changes at the same time. So if that could be put on there, that would be great. Just the simple note of overlapping terms. Yeah. Or mentorship so we would need a motion to amend the minutes with that edit so if everyone agrees to that we need a motion and then terry can redo those and send them out and we can approve them so do you want me to change what i wrote chad suggested we um, change how we do this role is that what you want me to leave in there no i can word it very simply i'm not sure i can um okay do Go a, uh, motion um uh, but it's the wording would be to consider having overlapping terms for leadership. I, I strongly uh, agree, and I'll try to frame well, I was it. almost done, but yeah. for, purposes of, mentor, for yeah. purposes of mentorship, yes. yes. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. Jack Jacqueline. No, I, I wholeheartedly- Hold on, hold on, agree. hold on, Jackie. Let me get this straight to Chad too. before we go on. Consider having overlapping terms for leadership. Is there anything else you wanted? In consideration of mentorship. Anything else? Anything else, Chad? You want me to take out? What's... Hold on, Chad. We, you want me to take out what's there and add this. Is that correct? No. What are you asking me to do? Nothing yet. Well, we're talking about the main minutes. Yeah. So you want me to add this in? Do you want me to leave what's no, in there no. already? No, there's a, there's a process that we're going through right now, Terry, where it's just stated, Jacqueline has some questions. There's been no motion made yet. Oh, for heaven's sake. Minutes are usually for motions that have passed and minority opinions. That's usually what a minute is for. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. All righty, go ahead. Jacqueline? Uh, I, I, I was trying to focus so that I could phrase it um, in the way that you you were phrasing it because I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I think we had a little conversation, um, maybe Rosemary and, and uh, Pat and I. Um, I, I. I would like to get your phraseology because I like the way we're talking about overlapping and mentorship uh, for um, 
transitioning leadership and that we uh, give that um, very strong consideration in our selection and election of officers. So I would say, based on what you said, I, I let it so be moved. All right, well, I, I may do things different than other, um, what do you call it, meeting facilitators. I would like to hear from everyone. Um, uh, opposing and uh, you know opinions and so on um, then I will call for a motion at the end and a vote I'd like to have a discussion so that we know what we're talking about what we want yeah in um, this way in this way we can form it a little bit different than the original poster posted <laughs> we can expand it contract it etc but well, we, we do have only until 6 30 and that's yeah. very atypical so what you're talking about with minutes if you want to make a change is that you as the person who's recommending that would say what you want the change to be and then there there can be a motion and i don't know that it, it's really standard practice to to go around the room if you're the person who's suggesting the mm -hmm. edit uh-huh i don't want to cut karen off either yeah i i have a question so i are are we talking about there seems to be, to me, I'm a little bit confused about whether we're talking about non-overlapping for membership or for leadership, or if it's both. So I think I heard both ways that we're going to make an attempt to, to not replace a bunch of people on the board at the same time, or are we just talking about leadership? Well, we can't even do that. So that would right, require right. a change yeah, to I'm, the bylaw. I'm just, okay, I'm, good. As good. we're talking about, I, I get that what we're all we're doing now is amending the minutes. And so that's beyond this discussion. That's but, right. but I I just wasn't clear what the point was, but I guess that's for a future meeting rather than for the purposes of amending the minutes. Yes, but to your first point, so the, the appointments of the COA members, that's done based on a three-year period. And that can happen, you know, not everyone leaves the board at the same time. So there does tend to be some overlap in that way, but that is a, a state standard where it's a three-year term unless you choose to resign. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like what you're talking about, Chad, is 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 a bigger issue that cannot really be taken care of by simply amending minutes, and that it's something that you can bring up at a future meeting. My 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 point is, I wanted to state what I stated, and what I stated. <laughs> okay. What I stated was about the leadership that uh, the idea back in May or April was that hey. we sort of um, correct an oversight, as, as Jacqueline would say, an oversight of that new bylaw, that um, we have overlapping terms uh, of, the, of the change from president, treasurer, um, secretary, um, vice president, et cetera, uh, into the, what, what I call the threesome. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say. Um, and um, if folks are, are willing to um, try to re uh, remember if I said that or not, um, you know, um, we can vote on that, that change to the, to the minute. So Chad, <clears throat> do you want me to leave what's already in there or take that out and add this in? No, just add that. Add that. There you go. All right, is, is there, I don't know if there needs to be a motion on something like this or not. Yes, it's, there it's does. if you're changing the minutes okay. that were submitted, there it's has to be a motion. Well, we're not changing them because we haven't accepted them but, yet. But that's what but, the, but that, that was the draft that was put forward. So if you want to change the draft, there has to be a motion. Yeah. All right, I'm not going to make one as a chair. As a I so move that, uh, that the changes uh, be accepted. Are there any seconds? I second. I see a couple of seconds. Third. Second, did you get them, Terry? Third. Did you get them, Terry? Yes, I did. Okay. <clears throat> so put it to a vote. Uh, first on my left is Christina. Yes, I do remember Chad speaking about it, mm -hmm. about the structure of having three people versus an entire board be responsible for 
um, what happens on the board. So on I, remember him, I remember him speaking about it and saying it. It just didn't make it into the minutes. And so well, that was it. <clears throat> we're talking about the May minutes and what he talked about with the three people was in June. Actually, we're we're right now we're tolling people on the boat. So are you are you voting, Christina, to say yes? Yes, um, okay. I voted yes. Next yes. is um, Karen. Yes. Uh, Dennis. Yes. And uh, Jacqueline. Yes. And Ter Terry. Yes. All right. It sounds like um, that's yes. been, as amended, maybe. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. Next, we have uh, the June minutes. Actually, our last minutes. Yeah. Right. Those minutes that you uh, <laughs> received in the mail. Is there any additions, changes, or questions? I, I have a question. Haley, in my June minutes, it says Council on Aging member notebook, Chad, Mila, and Jacqueline are going to review the Council on Aging notebook with Haley. It is proposed to be completed by September 30th. Oh, um, that has not happened yet. Um, no, I've not been in touch with Mila or Chad about that. Um, but certainly we we can do that. We do have time before September. Okay, do you 30th. remember that? Do you remember saying that or because no. I know we talked about the CBD too, but then um Chad wanted to to reamend the member notebook, and I know you wanted to be involved, and so that's what I wrote down. Yeah, um part of the issue here is that we did not take a vote on that. When you don't take a vote, um we don't know who does what and who does what, when, where, etc. So we state, this is why I like to do things the way I just mentioned. We discuss an item and then a motion is made and then we vote on it because it gets clearer and clearer. Mm. Uh, there's not a lot of amendments to the motion and so on. It's what it says in our bylaws about consensus. It's a consensus way along with Robert's rules. At any rate, the, the intention that I gave at that time was just to do some work on, on the um, onboarding manual, the board manual, what, what have you. The member um, notebook. At some point, the town is going to have a process for all boards of the town that is an onboarding process. So, you know, if, and on one level, it's kind of a moot point that we work on on our own manual. So that wasn't passed by a vote. Um, you know, it's great that it's in the minute because it shows what was discussed. It's one of those cases where we didn't vote or pass anything, but we do need to put it in our record so that we can see what we're talking about and who brought it up and so on. But no, no, no um, action was voted on for that, Terry. It's just, you know. It was a discussion and that was our, okay. All right, so any other questions on uh, last month's minutes or comments? I move the bay accepted. Any seconds? Second. Yes, we have a second. So we'll go around again. Uh, Christina? Yes, that's. That's yes. 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 Okay. Um, Karen. Yes. Dennis. Yes, of course. Uh, Jacqueline. Yes. And Terry. Yes. So it's that's passed as well. So we're caught up now on the minutes. Yahoo! Minutes. Um, guest speaker. Um, Linda Terry has some time. Um, I see we got five minutes left. <laughs> Um, is that going to give you enough time or would you like yeah, to go? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but there. I do have a message from the friends, Linda. So I just need like one minute. If you can sure. just give me one minute then. Yeah, you want to go first or you want to? Oh, I will. Yeah, I'll keep it brief. So we did not fundraise. I'm relaying this on behalf of Dick Yorga. There was no fundraisers in FY22 on, from the friends of the Amherst Senior Center. So we are trying to rectify that and get some uh, donations into the Senior Center. And to do that, we will be doing a holiday calendar raffle um, mm. later this year. 
So people, please be on the lookout. And when that is done, tell all your friends, buy a ticket, um, it's supporting a really good cause. We do need to, to get some revenue up at the Senior Center so we can keep on doing our amazing lineup of programs and services. So check, uh, check the Senior Spirit newsletter for more details to come. And that's all. Haley, is there going to be a theme? Um... We are, we're going to try to keep it local. Um, so we'll be reaching out to local businesses for gift card donations, you know, a free massage or a free haircut, um, gift cards to, to restaurants, you know, just something to try to make it fun. Um, you know, you can support a good cause and hopefully win something in return. And we are doing it so that if you win once you go back in the pot. So in theory, you could win every day of the month. It's just not statistically likely that that would happen. Well, I, I was uh, referencing the, the calendars, many calendars will mm -hmm. have themes. Oh, um, I was going to do, well, we were thinking of doing uh, like a New Year's kind of thing around the holidays. So if we are selling the tickets in November and December, they're a great stocking stuffer. Um, and like the theme could be New Year, New You kind of a thing. I did win on the Hadley Senior Center Jeez. calendar twice. So you. you'll, have, you'll have to try ours out too. Of course, you got it. Mm. All right. There okay. we go. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, very briefly, I wanted to let you know that the long awaited picnic that was scheduled for last Monday happened to land on the one day we had plenty of rain. And uh, <laughs> so we did postpone and cancel, and we are rescheduling for September 12th. We just figured, you know, August, you know, for all the reasons that we don't do things in August, and um, so hope you y'all come. And that uh, we, we looked like we were going to have a really good turnout. And our biggest issue was, of course, what to do with all the food, some of the food that we bought at Costco, and we we're solving that problem. Um, okay, so that that the other just in in terms of you, you know, I don't know if this you see this in your uh, role, but you know, we are also looking to expand our board. Um, we didn't do a board recruitment last year, and of course, a couple of people rotated off, and, and we are we really are looking to expand. If you know of anybody who you would, you know, think would be a good fit for an, another older adult organization, um, please do forward and. Uh, we don't have a schedule yet for nominations and all that, but we're setting up our, our process and I'll share it with you when we have it, uh, the dates, target dates and everything. Um, so I, I, I think I'll, I'll keep it at that. Okay, great. Thank yep. you. All right, uh, number 10. Are there any topics? Um, that have come up in the last two days that uh, we've not been informed about that should be considered. Not aware of it. Shall we schedule the next meeting? Um, uh, there, there's, there's something, I guess, that would go on the next uh, agenda. Um, our talking about pr proposals for safe places and spaces for uh, seniors, being able to make sure that there's something here in Amherst. Uh, in the winter time, it could be uh, heat stations or whatever you want to call it. Um, and when there's seriously inclement weather, like New England snows and so forth, and the electricity might go off, these are considerations. This summer, of course, it has to do with the uh, high temperatures. And I think it's important for us because I, I think it was two years ago I called and was trying to track down um, safe places for seniors. And I was told that they don't exist anymore, that it doesn't exist. And um, in light of COVID, I know that some uh, constraints are presented, but in our next meeting, I'd like that to be discussed. Can you frame it a little bit more for me, please, Jacqueline? Is this, um, you know, for homeless, homeless folks or? No, no, no. Um, if, if the electricity goes out, seniors have options. 
there's some place that's going to be safe. They don't have to be houseless. Um, but being, being, being able to, to, to know that there is something here. Uh, some places I've, I've lived in that ha has been uh, a top priority. A resilience center? A warming center, I would say. It could be a, it, in the, in the wintertime, it's a warming center. And in the summertime, when, especially when the uh, temperatures are as they are, a cool mm -hmm. the, way, like the way that I hear it is a discussion on safe places for seniors during inclement weather. Oh, Sounds okay. good. That's well said. Mm -hmm. That's right. exactly because right. There is a resilience center, which is uh, for hurricanes, snowstorms, intense, yeah. heat, intense heat. Northampton is going to build one. They anyway, have, um, have that is that, what we're talking kind of about that... for uh, a possible item on the agenda next time. Sounds good. Um, I'm looking at the calendar for our next meeting. Um, is it the uh, 18th of August? Let me see. Could we possibly, because of heat and everything else, could we possibly transfer over to uh, September and take the month of August off? How, how do people feel about that? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I agree. I'm okay. <laughs> Three people want to um, want to um, meet in September when we can go uh, in public. No more. Yeah. Uh, no, that's actually not true. We cannot meet in public until March 2023. The wow. Massachusetts state oh, has extend, okay. extended the remote participation. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Well, at any rate, we'll, we'll do Zoom meeting on, in September. Well, what's the date? What's the typical uh, uh, second Tuesday 15? is our usual? Oh, the eighth. Is it Thursday? Thursday. Okay, Definitely. right here on the eighth of September, uh, Zoom. I want to thank everyone for their participation and their efforts. Eighth um, of September. Have a nice month off, and we'll see you in September right here on Zoom. All Very right. good. Thanks, Take everybody. Care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good August. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. Thank cool. you. Cool.